something that could have been a blip kind of snowboard into a reasonably big relapse. And I kept saying, I'm not particularly worried about it, which probably bugged the f out of a lot of people. I know it did. Like when you can see someone's weight plummeting and they're like, I'm not bothered. I, I do tend to downplay everything. I know I do. I don't know if it's like an autism thing or a masculine thing. Not so great at being like down with the emotional stuff, but that was when everything was still negative. And I guess in recovery is where I would put myself. I just didn't want to be on this planet anymore for a, quite a while there. But I'm quite, quite happy on this planet again now, actually. Can you see the little raven dude? I don't know if he's a raven, a blackbird or a crow or something completely else, but he's watching me making sure I'm not up to any mischief in his cemetery. <laughs> I love the zoom on this thing so much. Oh my God, it's so fun. <laughs> anyway, hello, and welcome to one of my favorite places in the world. This is George and Martha. They are not relatives of mine. They, are, they have been here for a very, very long time, but this is a lovely, peaceful cemetery. And underneath this lovely, peaceful tree, there is this permanent shade that you can sit in and you can make videos and generally speaking nobody bothers you um, although I did I did get nearly flung out actually <laughs> when I came here um, in boy mode I had my boy clothes on and apparently if you're a boy in a cemetery looking a bit weird you're up to no good like if you look like a girl you can get away with anything but if you look like a boy you get some weird comments and they they didn't throw me out they just kind of made me very uncomfortable until I left <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, usually it's very peaceful and lovely around here. Also, welcome to my new hair. Um, I am liking it very much. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you know I like to do pastels in summer, but last summer was so completely shitty mental health wise, I did not do my pastels and I missed them. Uh, it doesn't always look like this. It can also look like this when it's down. I was inspired by Lisbeth Salander in the Rooney Mara dragon tattoo video uh, movie. I took like a bunch of pictures of her to the hairdresser and was like this 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 you've got to like leave the bits here so you can swoop them up and you've got to do this 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 and she got it really right and I really really like it I really love that it's just a bit more punky and masculine when it's up but it can also be kind of cute and fairy like when it's down but anyway what I'm actually here to waffle about um is that I've been promising the Instagram people a eating disorder update for really quite a long time and I wanted to make it tonight partly because I don't want people worrying about me unnecessarily um, and also because there are things that I kind of need to get off my chest too. Um, so yes, if you've, if you've seen the other videos I made, I made one on IGTV and I made one at the beginning of all of this on YouTube. Um, basically, yes, everything was kicked off relapse-wise by cyberbullying, which probably affected me ridiculously because of the fact that I'm currently uh, being diagnosed to see if I have ADHD too, which it looks like I probably do, and uh, the whole rejection sensitive dysphoria thing, oh my god, relate, seriously relate, it's crazy, like while for so many years I wanted to pretend to be like that person who nothing ever gets to me, nothing ever gets to me, that was always because I was doing drugs or drinking <laughs> that was my armor and without that armor honestly I'm a gigantic pussy and I can't take criticism when it's harshly delivered at all um, <laughs> so that hit me really hard but there's also been a lot of real life shit going on for the last year that has been intense and scary and ridiculous and only finally just now is that starting to go away and yes I do want to tell you I really want to tell you what that has been about and what that has been like because it's a crazy story. It's honestly, of all the crazy stories I have, this last year is, is hands down the craziest story I have to tell you, but I need to get this thing fully fixed first. But because that was going on too, I think I just felt very help, very hopeless and something that could have been a blip kind of snowballed into a reasonably big relapse. And I kept saying, I'm not particularly worried about it, which probably bugged the fuck out of a lot of people. I know it did. Like when you can see someone's weight plummeting and they're like, I'm not bothered, I'm not fine, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, I can see why people were dropping Eugenia Cooney comparisons on me, um, because yeah, the, the I'm fine act bugs me about her too. And I was kind of doing the same thing, but only because I know my history with relapses, that ever since 
the shroom trip which cured my eating disorder which I've made a video about before and it will be coming up in the nostalgia project I do want to go over that story as a written version as well because it was a big part of my life journey I have relapsed about three or four times since then and every damn time it's been basically the same as this time as in weight drops very fast the minute it gets miserable or difficult or boring <laughs> I get bored and I quit so that was the main reason that I was like yeah I'm not particularly worried uh, and that is really what's happened that I have I have sort of popped out of it lately um, partly as a result of real life shit improving that has been a huge factor um, because I think honestly the real life shit was so bad that the other reason I was not worried was that I don't know if I should even admit this, but there was a large part of me that was hoping it would kill me because it was like suicide is against my belief, my belief system. I, certain things in the past year have made me think I don't, and that's a whole subject, not for its other, for its own video, because I think everyone's belief system should be their own. I don't think I should inflict my crazy ass beliefs on anyone else. Um, but I, I don't believe that suicide is a good idea. I don't believe it's something that I should ever do or that ideally people should avoid at all costs. Um, spiritually, that's what I believe. <laughs> but my out, and I, sorry, laughing because my, my, my out for this was like, oh, well, if it's like an eating disorder and it's kind of like a semi-accident, if I don't, well, that's not really suicide, is it? So this was my, honestly, my belief system while I was really relapsed was like, if it kills me, great. I, I don't want to live like this, so if it kills me, great. Um, and I was totally open about that with my therapist. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, she started seeing me more regularly and stuff like that. And she was trying to push me towards eating disorder services. And I just kept saying, no, I, I don't. I know there are people who want it and who need it. And I don't see any point entering into a service that I don't want to try with. So I never went through with that. And honestly, I think that's fine because at this point, as I say, I'm really pulling out of everything um, because the real life shit has improved. And it's like, you know what? I don't want to die anymore. So that's good. So if I'm not trying to die, <laughs> well, um, then I guess I'm trying to live and I guess I'm happy living. And at that point, my appetite came back because really I often wondered, like, does this even count as an eating disorder relapse when I'm not? really deliberately starving myself it's mostly that my appetite's gone and if your appetite goes and you're an ex-eating disordered person obviously that's triggering like you do think oh well i'm not going to force myself to eat i hate being this weight anyway so if i'm going to lose weight and i don't want to eat anyway then awesome you know that's kind of your thought process so i did go along with it and i did maybe push it a little bit but i just found it so easy to not really eat much which has never happened to me before like i'm a, i'm a really big binge purger in relapses usually that's where i go and i know my body can't handle that anymore so i'm really glad it didn't go that way um because i don't i don't have any health complications at the moment like i'm still getting my period uh hair's not falling out like nothing nothing terrible health wise has happened to me because of not doing the really damaging behaviors not to say that oh just not eating very much is fine it's clearly not fine like i was like tired lethargic did get dizzy a lot stuff like that but um none of the really terrible stuff hit me i guess because it was also quite brief um so that's good so these days i am not counting calories anymore i'm kind of eating intuitively uh, still kind of sticking to certain food rules and stuff because I find that if I recover very quickly it is a disaster that is when a relapse turns into like a serious disaster is if I try and recover really fast I gain the weight really fast then I flip out and that's when it all goes very wrong so recovery has to be slow for me and honestly the weight I'm at at the moment it is actually the weight that I was at for the majority of my recovered life and for the majority of my life actually that I was born underweight um the doctors bugged my mom when I was a baby and when I was a kid to like feed me formula, fatten me up and all of this because I was an underweight baby, I was an underweight kid. She was like, breast is best, like natural is best, I'm not going to do this to my kids. So I stayed like an underweight kid and I was always really, really healthy. Like my normal weight stepbrothers, they always had colds and flu and were off school all the time. And I was really jealous because they got time off school. They got like everyone giving them attention. I was always super healthy. None of that ever happened to me. Um, so I was underweight all my life basically. The, the time that I finally got into the healthy weight range was when I started 
drinking a bottle of Jack a day and I shot through the healthy weight range and became overweight. Um, and honestly, I've been trying to, I've been trying to lose that alcohol weight ever since 2018. And in 2018, I lost most of it. And then I started binging my ass off basically. Um, and kind of carried on binging my ass off through lockdown. Um, hence getting up to the weight I was at before. And I know for a lot of people that was kind of like an ideal looking weight, you know, the whole thick trend that's so in now. And that looks so good on some people. And I felt good with a corset on, <laughs> with a corset on. I felt like, yeah, this looks good. I haven't asked for the first time in my life. Like, yeah, this is cool. Um, but with a corset off, I was so unhappy with my body and just, like videos I've got, like I tried to start diets over and over and over and over again and I was never happy with my body and I didn't feel healthy. I couldn't, I couldn't do a single push up. Like there was, I was just like, I, it was just not comfortable for me at all. Um, whereas like, okay, well I've been eating intuitively for about eight, six, eight weeks and I haven't gained any weight so far. Is my body okay with actually being back at its old set point? I don't know, um, you know, I am prepared for the fact that probably like having lost my appetite and not eaten for a bit, my body probably will have the like rebound binging at some point. So it's quite possible that I will just bloat back up to where I was before. And if that happens, I'll deal with it, you know, but I would like to see if I can maintain round about here, maybe like a few pounds heavier because I like low key hate how my face looks at the moment. Um, I really preferred my face round about 15 pounds heavier than I am now. And I remember thinking that in 2018 when I was losing the weight, I was like, actually, my face looks really good at this weight. And I look back on my old videos and I remember thinking how big my mouth looked in all my videos and just how, what a weird long face I had and all this, this big mouth. <laughs> and that's come back again now. Like, I feel like one of the reasons I haven't really done proper lipstick today is that I don't know how to draw my lips on my face shape anymore because when I draw them how I used to and I overdraw, my mouth just fucking takes over my face when I'm talking <laughs> and it looks so weird. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm kind of like, okay, I like my body at this weight, but my face looks just fucked. And even my mum, like my mum at the beginning of when I was losing weight was was actually really impressed and was really kind of like egging me on obviously she didn't like I didn't talk to her I wasn't like yeah I've relapsed you should shut up I wasn't like that because that's not me I don't, I don't talk about serious stuff with my mom that was a vow I made to myself when I was 18 and I've stuck to ever since because honestly we just get on better when we don't talk about real shit um but anyway my mom was recently saying like yeah your face is looking very hollow are you looking are you eating much so I've been trying to just like eat around her as much as possible because I, I just I just feel like I, I don't need anyone else crawling up my ass right now when it comes to mental health I have like yeah I have a psychologist I have a therapist who l physically comes to my house because of covid and stuff so it's yeah therapy stuff like feels like it's really just on me at the moment I guess since I worried this one with the whole like yeah I'm not really eating and I'd like to die stuff so she started coming around more often as I say so um and then when you pull out of it and you feel fine you just feel like a drama queen and you're just like dude please stop crawling up my ass and bugging me about therapy stuff I feel happy and I don't want to talk about it you know <laughs> um so uh so yeah so basically stop counting calories maintaining my weight have a lot more energy eating absolutely what I want to eat within certain rules. Like I'm still not totally cool with carbs generally. I mean, unless it's like fruit, I'm eating a lot of fruit. I will put sugar in my tea. So actually I'm a huge hypocrite when it comes to carbs. But um, and my brother came around a week ago and brought this risotto and it was like the day after my mom had said she was worried about me. So I was like, clearly got to eat this risotto. And like, not gonna lie, eating that risotto was fucking hard. Like it just didn't it didn't want to go in me and then my brother said something about having fried the vegetables that were in it and I was like should I go in you know what and I was like no dude we're not doing that we're not doing that but yeah I, yeah so um there's certain things I'm not cool with yet but um <laughs> as I say recovery has to be a slow process for me and for most people I would say 
Um, you know, the first time I recovered from my eating disorder being serious, I was, I was so sick of my eating disorder. I was so sick of looking weird. Everyone treating me with all of it. I was like, I'm just going to stuff my face and I'm going to be normal like this. And that's all there is to it. And, you know, so I did just start eating and eating and eating, trying to gain weight really fast. And I did, I gained about, I, I don't know, I gained like 30 pounds in about two months and just shat bricks, you know, just <laughs> really, <laughs> probably literally, but um, no, I was just, it freaked me out so hard. It freaked me out. Like you think you're ready to just be normal again, but if you push yourself that hard and that fast, like it takes an iron will to be okay with it. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to do that to myself again. So uh, slow progress and all of that, but yeah, eating, eating a lot, nothing really to worry about. Genuinely fine and all of that. Um, so that, I guess, is, is the bit that I wanted to say, really, for you guys, to let you guys know there's there's nothing to worry about, really. And uh, you guys have been lovely, though. I've had some lovely letters in my P.O. box. Oh, my God. Actually, I got some this morning. I haven't opened them yet. Oh, fuck. Shit. I should have done that before I did this video. Then I could have... I could have said thanks. <laughs> Shit, I'm so disorganised. Um, so yeah, you guys have been super lovely. I've had lovely letters and things, but um, yeah, so I wanted to let you guys know. Thank you for those. And uh, actually, things are a lot better. But anyway, the bit the bit that I wanted to say for me really uh, does concern Instagram more than YouTube. Um, maybe it concerns YouTube too. I don't know because, as you probably know, I am a gigantic pussy again. Rejection sensitive dysphoria. Uh, I'm a gigantic pussy and I am terrified of my YouTube comments. I'm terrified of my inboxes. Um, I'm terrified of all of that stuff. So I tend to dodge it like crazy. Um, Instagram really feels like kind of my comfortable home on the internet as far as public platforms go. Instagram is, is where I'm the most comfortable because people usually have pictures of their own faces. Therefore, they, they don't say some of the shit that people will say on YouTube or from like in an email or whatever. Um, so Instagram, Instagram feels quite safe and friendly basically. So I love, I love my, my outfit videos and stuff on Instagram, but since relapsing the amount of comments about, oh, this is so toxic. You look like you're body checking or like, you look like you're so proud of yourself. You know, if I, if I'm walking around with my hands on my hips, like, you know, if you're doing an outfit video, that tends to be the pose you're in, right? But people will read so deep into shit. It's like, you look like you're so proud of yourself. You're body checking. And um, I'd think fair dues if I hadn't already made a 17 minute long video about what body checking looks like and is really like. And yes, I did make that video due to and based on my own recent social media experiences, which I'm pretty darn sure I said in the intro of the video. So I'm not quite sure why I've had so many people on my Instagram making comments like, oh, I could tell what he was really doing in that video. He was totally trying to justify his own body checking. It's like, mate, I literally said in the intro of that video, I'm pretty sure anyway, I said in the intro of that video, I've had recent experiences that have opened my eyes to these things. Obviously I was trying to explain this is what it would look like. This is what it doesn't look like. Get my gist, you know. Um, so, <laughs> but even after I made that video, you know, and I made that video thinking, look, for me and for every other openly ED person on any platform, like it is so toxic when you are driven away from your social media, i.e. your support network, by people thinking you're doing a toxic thing that you're not doing. So I want to explain this. I want to, I want to help other people and myself just continue to live their lives and not feel they have to hide themselves because of having a mental illness, essentially. Like that's all it really is. It's a mental illness that is unfortunately visible. Um, there are lots of physical illnesses that cause you to lose weight too, but I very much doubt you would tell somebody who say was a cancer patient or say had recently lost their wife and had lost a lot of weight through grief you would not be telling those people please get off your social media your body is is triggering and toxic like they're going through enough you you're not going to do that to them and i feel the same about people with mental illnesses that show on their body like don't you know if yes trigger warnings if you're showing something very graphic, you know, if, if you're if you're Anna posing as as we used to call it back in the day, you know, deliberately flexing your rib cage, think the uh, 
You know that classic Kate Moss picture in the Calvin Klein advert where she's kind of flexing like this and she's I think she's topless or wearing a bra and like her rib cage is really visible. If it's something like that, even if it's artsy, like yes, put a trigger warning on something like that, sure, but although at the same time you, you can't protect people from themselves, you know, there are a lot of people who want to be triggered and if they see a trigger warning they will just click all the faster because it's like this is gonna be good, man. You can't protect everyone. Um but to protect the accidental people, the people who are trying to avoid being triggered. Yeah, like stuff like that that's really gratuitous, yes, trigger warning, but when you are just saying, hey, I got a new outfit and I love it, this is, this is me in a new outfit that I love, um, and you're just going about your day and it has nothing to do with your weight, you know, and you've always loved making outfit videos, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to not include yourself and your body anymore? Are you just supposed to lay them out on the ground and go, hey guys, here's, here's my outfit that I'm going to wear for today, but I've got a mental illness and um, so my, my body shouldn't be seen by anyone, you know, I, I need to start wearing a burqa, um, you know, no diss to people who do wear burqas, but I'm not because you're so ashamed of your body and you've been made so ashamed of your body that you have to hide it. But anyway, to return to the actual subject, um, obviously I, I am not body checking in outfit videos I make. I've explained in the video I made before, which maybe I will link below if anyone wants to go check that, um, what body checking actually does and would look like. And it's not the kind of thing that anyone is going to upload to a normal public non pro Anna account. Like you're just not gonna do it. Because because it's so obvious it's body checking, whereas you, body checking doesn't tend to be this subtle little thing. I think something that probably everyone has noticed on Instagram, and maybe that is why I'm getting these comments, is that yes, I am more confident in my body now. Like there there are things like I wouldn't wear short sleeves um, before the weight I was at. I would not wear short sleeves without having like fishnet or whatever on my arms. Whereas now I'm completely happy with my arms. Um, I'm back to like as I say, I spent like what, 15 years of my life from, from a teenager to age 30, I spent at round about this weight or lower. Um, so this is, this is still kind of like my normal to me, like everything for the past few years has been way above my normal. Um, and the only thing I, I really feel sad about is, as I say, my face, like my face, I do feel looked prettier or cuter or just generally better, whatever word you want to use, it looked better. Um, a few pounds ago, but I'm so much more confident in my body and I feel so much more, dude, I feel so much more healthy um, and strong at this weight. Like I can do press ups again, I can do back bends again, I can do kind of gymnastic stuff again. I can sit in my favorite position again. Like I, as my brother puts it, I sit like Gollum. I sit with my legs up to my chest all the time when I'm sitting on kitchen chairs, anything. I sit like this with both legs and I, <laughs> And while I was heavy, I couldn't do that anymore because my stomach was like this pillow and I could only get my knee to like here and I could feel my stomach kind of pressing against my thighs and just getting in my way. Now I can I can sit in my, my comfortable autistic position again and things like that, it just, I just feel much more myself. Looking back at the history of my life, there have been multiple times that I started to gain weight and something has always kind of knocked my weight back down again, whether it was some kind of addiction, whether it was anxiety, whether it was a relapse, like whenever I seem to get to a certain weight, something seems to go wrong in my life and it just seems to just fall off again um, in whatever way, shape or form, I don't know. But um, I don't know, anyway, like I, I'm not one of these like, oh, everything happens for a reason, people. Um, I, th I think people who say that like, everything is currently going right in your life is what it means. And, uh, you know, I could say that about all of this. I could say, oh, well, actually, you know, I, f I feel really great in myself right now. So maybe it was good that I was like totally cyber bullied and wanted to die for three months. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that. I think I am, I am cherry picking the good bits to be an optimist is what I'm doing. Anyway, fuck, I'm really waffling here. I'm really waffling. What I actually wanted to say is, yeah, this is this is probably what my body will look like for a while. Therefore, um, it would be cool if the comments regarding, oh, this is so toxic, I can see you body checking and all of that, if those comments would kind of stop now, that would be really, really cool. Um, or comments generally about, oh, this is so toxic. You're being like Eugenia Cooney, this is so toxic. Um, no, at this point you're commenting on someone who is actively trying to pull out of their nosedive 
who has, in my opinion, pulled out of their nosedive. I mean, my therapist has backed the fuck off my ass today after me saying, yeah, you know, I don't want to die and I'm eating food and I'm happy. Um, so uh, that's why I wanted to make this video today is that I have recorded this video before, but that was when everything was still negative. And so obviously I'm very glad that I kind of got delayed in editing that because stuff has changed and now I can give you a positive video. In recovery is where I would put myself. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. The, the, the culture of my family, we don't use words like that. Like, even now, man, we are so fucked up about mental illness. We don't use words like that. Like, nobody has ever celebrated with me any anniversary of any kind of recovery, be that drug recovery, alcohol recovery, like eating disorder sort of recovery. No one has ever like celebrated with me no one has ever asked me like oh what what you know how long has it been how long have you been sober or clean or healthy for like it's never that like we don't use the words recovered relapse we, <laughs> it's just so fucking british and 80s about it all it is also swept under the rug so even calling myself like in recovery it just sounds so weird to me because it's just not a word that I've ever really used about myself out loud <laughs> maybe like typing on on forums but never out loud so it sounds it sounds weird in my mouth it feels weird in my mouth um <laughs> but uh yeah I, I guess I mean I I just I do tend to downplay everything I know I do um I don't know I don't know if it's like an autism thing or like a masculine thing uh I think it's probably a masculine thing. You know, I grew up with three brothers, two dads, not gay dads, but a stepdad and a biological dad. So a lot, a lot, a lot of blokes around me, like consider myself a bit of a bloke, therefore not so great at being like down with the emotional stuff. And uh, particularly portraying myself in a position of weakness. I am not good at that. That is why I think for so many years I tried to play off like I was absolutely not bothered about criticism, absolutely not bothered about hate, all of that, because it's macho, you know? <laughs> and I say with my fucking pink unicorn hair, um, <laughs> I'm just not good at being like, you know, people hurt my feelings and now I'm hurting myself and I'm sad and I need help. I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. I come off like such a fucking asshole in therapy, particularly when it's like addiction therapy or eating disorder therapy and you, you have to go in there and you have to prostrate yourself on the floor and you, you have to say, you know, I'm really out of control and I, I can't control myself and I need help and I got, you know, I can't do that shit, man. I come and I sound like a prat because I'm, I'm like, yeah, so I used again this week, and uh, this is purely an example. I'm not saying I did, I did not. Um, but you know, I'd be like, yeah, I used again this week because I wanted to. I felt like it, uh, felt like it, fancied it. Uh, fuck you, kind of thing. You know, the, the macho way of doing these things. That's all me. Uh, when actually, what I mean is, um, my cravings were fucking unbearable. I, I couldn't stand the world. Um, I couldn't live like that anymore. I couldn't get it out of my head and. So I fucked up, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was regrettable. Can't say those things, can't do it. It, it makes me fucking itch inside even saying them as an example. So, <laughs> so I know I come off like a bit of a prat when it comes to these things because I, I can't portray myself as weak, can't, yeah, that basically sums it up. Can't do that, um, <laughs> which is bullshit. For everyone, fucking bullshit. Boys can cry. Boys need therapy too, probably more than anyone else actually from bottling it up all their lives. Um, but even if you're raised female, like you still have that bullshit in your head. I think, I swear, it's just, it's just a part of you. It's just a part of you and it's very hard to get around. Um, so I, I know I come off like an asshole when I talk about things like this. Um, I know I do because I've had so many therapists who haven't seen through it and they've been like, you don't want help, you don't want help. It's like, am I not sitting here in a fucking therapist's office of my own free will? Like, come on, man. Um, you, you gotta see through the bullshit and they just don't see through the bullshit. My bullshit is too good. Either that or I guess they see me and they see my silly hair and all the rest of it and it's like, yeah, you're a rebellious dickhead, aren't you? You're a rebellious dickhead and you're just doing it for fun. And worst of all, you're a rebellious middle-class dickhead. So. Uh, you've got no excuse, you know, never mind the fact that you've got numerous underlying mental health conditions and 
you know, all the rest of it. No, 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 you've got no excuse because you're, you're middle class. I, I've literally had this said to me. I have literally had this said to me by a therapist. You don't belong here. You come, you come from a good family. You don't belong here. Um, drug services, that was. And it's like, I see his point. I see his point, but you, you've got to think, well, why, why would a person who comes from a good family who had you know, technically a fairly good start in life, why would they end up in this fucking position if there's not something deeply fucking wrong with them, you know? Um, you know, I, I said to him, well, where, where do I belong? Do I belong back in eating disorder services, services with, with the rest of the rich white girls? Is that where I belong? You know, um, because I've been there and they don't help because there's none in this area. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, he was he was interesting therapist I, I actually I actually requested that therapist I thought he was intelligent and interesting anyway when he quit he called me his most challenging client ever um, <laughs> wasn't trying to be but I mean he was kind of a dick and I, I'm kind of a dick so it, it, it didn't go so well but uh, anyway yeah so this is this is just turning into a great big chat now so um, I guess I guess I'm gonna shut up and go to Tesco's and buy more food to stuff myself with um, I'm really obsessed with yogurt right now. It's it's kind of occurred to me that I haven't really been taking in any calcium particularly over the last little while. Um, and I know I already have osteopenia, so I don't want to make it any worse. Uh, I'm well overdue for a bone scan, but while COVID is going on, I'm not going into a hospital when I don't need to for a bone scan. You know, that, that, that can wait another few months, you know. Um, but I should really find out, like, how bad that is because they put me on calcium pills for a while and I eventually stopped taking them and that was about a decade ago and um I shouldn't even laugh like that shit's serious you don't you don't want to end up with like broken hips by the time you're 50 um so yeah so yogurt I'm obsessed with yogurt so that's where I'm going is <laughs> I'm going to Tesco to buy yogurt and I don't know even why I'm telling you that because it's very boring and you don't care but uh Anyway, thank you for coming with me to my one of my favourite places. It's so fucking lovely, this cemetery. Oh my god, let me just show you around a little bit. It's it's beautiful with the with the sun setting. This video is just getting more tangential and bollocky by the second. I apologise. But uh, anyway, so I'm particularly fixated on outfit videos on Instagram right now because. I like my body, but I really don't particularly like my face right now. So you're more likely to see an outfit video than like 20,000 pictures of my makeup. So uh, it'd be cool if I stopped being driven away from my social media, i.e. my support network, <laughs> um, by that kind of negativity, negativity, that would be cool. Like I am definitely just gonna have to start reading my comments more thoroughly on there and just immediately just booting anyone who seems to have a very negative, like, S -s 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 -s, I can see what he's really doing. <laughs> Because I have seen a few of those on my Instagram and I don't like I don't like to block people. It just it feels very aggressive um, It's not really it's not, it's not aggressive It's not aggressive to set boundaries on a space that you were trying to keep positive not just for you But for everyone else too like that's not aggressive. That is fine. Why why am I so shit with setting boundaries like? Um, I don't know, but I need to just be more proactive with that um, when it comes to that kind of behavior not just for me but literally for the person too because hate clicking and hate viewing and you can tell that people are hate clicking and hate viewing when they're like this when they're like sk, sk, sk. you know they're getting so much pleasure out of dissing you and out of stalking your post and just being full of hate and it's like that's not good for you either I'm literally going to take my shit away from you because you are using it to hurt yourself like it's not an aggressive thing to do it helps everybody be cool with it don't be so weird um self-talk self-talk um but also if it applies to you it applies to you um anyway it's it's actually getting kind of late now and i need to go to tesco so i'm going to shut up thank you for being here for a gigantic waffle and for meeting my new hair and uh, <laughs> hopefully hopefully that clears stuff up and uh and yes hopefully Hopefully everything continues to be good and one day I can tell you my crazy fucking stories about last summer and this year and why I just didn't want to be on this planet anymore for a, quite a while there. Um, but I'm quite, quite happy on this planet again now, actually. Quite happy on this planet. Is it just going pastel? I swear whenever I go pastel I'm just happier as a person. It's the happiest colours. I was actually going to dye it black, dude. I was going to dye it black. Um, the whole Elizabeth Salander haircut. I was going to do the full thing and dye it black, but 
I'm so glad I didn't. Like it's it's summer. It's summer. It's actually a heat wave is just starting here. It's been like oh, I don't know degrees, but it, it's been hot and it's going to be even hotter tomorrow. Um, so maybe I'll come back here, make another video. I don't know. But uh, anyway, feeling quite cheerful. This is long. I'm going to shut up. So uh, thanks for being here with me over and out. Bye bye. <laughs>